Good morning, everyone. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the first part of our exciting four-part series, AI in Healthcare. As you all know, AI is no longer uh, science fiction. It is here and it is in practice now. The speciality about today's session is the knowledge sharing by Dr. B.K. Murli, who is actually putting AI into practice in his hospital. I am B.G. Thomas, the CEO and co-founder of Betzer. I welcome Dr. B.K. Murli, uh, owner of Hope Hospital, orthopedic surgeon and AI enthusiast, uh, and he has got a passion for technology. I am also welcoming Dr. Kanjan Venere, uh, Deputy Director of Health Services in Nagpur. I'm welcoming uh, Dr. Srijit N. Kumar, Organizing Chairman of uh, IMA National Co uh, Conference. I also welcome Jean John, who is co-founder and CEO of Betzer Life. Betzer is a startup registered in Kerala and recognized by Kerala Startup Mission and Government of India. Betzer aims to bridge the gap in global healthcare. Currently, Betzer is connecting global Indians to uh, doctors in India through an online platform. So without further ado, I'm transferring, uh, I'm inviting Dr. Srijit N. Kumar to give a short introduction about IMA National Conference. Over to you, Dr. Srijit. So thank you so much and uh, a very warm welcome and good morning to all of you. Uh, as I told in my post uh, in the IMA groups, this Sunday is going to be exciting and I can see Dr. Murli already roaring, you know. Uh, with enthusiasm, and uh, uh, we could hear his introduction as well. Uh, so, as we know that uh, digital technology is coming up in a big way, and uh, Indian Medical Association is actually very glad uh, to partner with this uh, important initiative. Now, the National Conference, as you all know, is on 27th and 28th of uh, this month. It's happening at Kovalam Tirubanandapuram. There's a host of programs which we have shared in the brochure, so I don't want to elaborate on that. But one of our main focus is uh, uh, digital technology uh, in medicine. So that is where uh, this very important lecture comes as a prelude uh, to the big event which is going to happen on 27th and 28th. It's going to be a this is a curtain raiser, and uh, we'll have much more in of offering uh, uh, in the national conference. We'll have a lot of pavilions, a lot of startups, uh, introduction to EMRs, tele meets, tele consultations, uh, 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 the prudent use of digital technology. We are going to, uh, one step further, like during the conference, probably it may not be possible, but either before or after the conference, we'll have a whole one-day workshop, uh, which is going to be held in one of the premium institutions in Tiruvannadavaram on integration of digital technology and medical care. So this is an emerging field and we are excited to, you know, be part of it. And I assure all our delegates a great experience, not just in the conventional, uh, uh, you know, languages and in the conventional um, uh, uh, topics which we used to discuss, but also in this very promising and emerging field of uh, digital technology and medical care. Uh, I'm extremely thankful to uh, Mr. Biji Thomas, uh, Ms. Jean, uh, and also Dr. Murali uh, for, you know, uh, allowing us also to associate with that. I'm sure all our conference delegates will have uh, a great treat today. And I promise that much more is coming on 27th and 28th of December. And I welcome all of you to be in Kovalam, not just to enjoy the sun, sea and breeze, but also to witness a very exciting academic event. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Srijit. Uh, there was a technical glitch on the PowerPoint uh, in the beginning. That's why we didn't... Uh, so roll out seamlessly. Uh, thank you for bearing with that. Um, just want to invite uh, Dr. Kanjan Vanere for give a small felicitation and her perspective uh, on uh, AI in healthcare. Dr. Kanjan is Deputy Director of Health Services in Nagpur and 
also she very act she has taken very active role as a civil servant surgeon during covid she is currently pursuing her phd i'm not reading everything on the slide uh, but we are very excited to have you here ma'am and we would like you to give like a few words about your perspective of ai in healthcare before we move to dr murli um thank you so much bg for uh, such a elaborate introduction uh being on administrative post in government of maharashtra i would like to stress on certain points which are very important in ai first i would like to tell few things about challenges in healthcare system uh, as we all know there are there is a limited access to healthcare facilities with qualified doctors especially in tribal and rural areas and as all of us know that uh, healthcare work so work for shortages like mbbs doctors are not there there are enough medical colleges in maharashtra but most of the doctors they prefer to stay in uh, and practice in cities because of their family and children's problem then as we all know that according to who the patient to doctor ratio should be around like doctor for one doctor 1000 patients but when we look at the statistics it is around 1 as to 30000 so it's a huge gap coming to economical disparities as we all know sometimes the doctors they are available in peripheral areas in tribal areas but because of the economics poor patient they prefer to go to the government setup then there are certain chronic uh, chronic health condition in uh, tribal areas because of the abuse of alcohol and tobacco uh, like oral cancers are rampant in there and uh, in hilly areas as we all know that iron deficiency diseases are rampant then um, because of the lifestyle of the these people there are chronic health condition there also then most important point that i faced on day to day basis is medical imaging and diagnostic because radiologists are not there in tribal area so we face lots of problem for that government of maharashtra has taken some initiatives which i will talk on later now what digital infrastructure we have in healthcare so in private also and in government also we have healthcare facilities in place in the remotest of the remote area like sub centers pscs rural hospitals and then come the district hospital and the medical colleges so in rural areas uh, like up to uh, rural hospitals we have telemedicine services in place and we have a vast network of ashas and we have bms doctors posted in uh, pscs and sub centers all the ashas are provided with uh, mobile phone android mobile phone with inter internet and most of the private practitioners in rural area and tribal area they have mobile phones with internet facilities in place so um, asha we can take use of all this infrastructure now how we can you know digitally transform all these things now as i already told you that uh, tele consultation is already in place that can be integrated with ai now i would like to tell some things in detail like we have a tele consultation facilities in almost all the rural hospitals and we can extend that with the private sector also so here like we have a doctor sitting on the other end in tribal area and the consultant will be sitting in the hub okay so that tele consultation is done like on real time basis if we integrate all these facilities with ai so ai will be able to tell us the provisional diagnosis and the doctor sitting on the other end even if the consultation consultant is not available in her area because sometimes it is not possible so provisional diag with the help of provisional diagnosis and the supportive uh, investigation he can you know come to some conclusion and start the treatment immediately so this will be very helpful in critical emergency cases and we have another uh, very good project which is a pioneer project in uh, i think india only it is temi project so here ecgs are done at rural areas or maybe pscs and they are shared uh, by tele consultation with the uh, hospital maybe private or um, it might be a medical college and then accordingly thrombolization and all the treatments are done 
uh, what we have started in uh, that is more interesting. Now this year we have started AI integration in our government setup. So we have an application made for our transfers where data of all the health, healthcare workforce is uploaded along with their choices. Okay, so this year all the transfers were done with AI and for my surprise, you know, they were so perfect, 99% per, uh, percent, uh, perfection was there and transparency was there. So this is just a baby step in integrating AI with our healthcare system. Now, what we can do in future? First of all, I would like to stress on predictive analysis. This is very important in private as well as government sector. So here, what we do in predictive analysis, we upload all the lifestyle, then uh, history, family history of the patient, then uh, some of the investigations, and then we predict what disease this patient might be getting in future. If And then accordingly, we can advise that patient to make certain lifestyle changes. And you know what? This is going to take lots of, you know, healthcare burden from the system. So this will, uh, this is a very important step and this, this we are going to start. Then secondly, uh, the subject very close to my heart is mental health. Because of nuclear families, because of the, you know, uh, burden on the youth about performing in the society. So they go through certain depression, maybe anxiety. So we can develop certain health chatbots where these patients can talk, you know, with the AI and certain, they, AI might not be able to prescribe, you know, but the counseling can be done through AI and we can, you know, relieve the symptoms of these patients. Then most important for me as a public health uh, department servant is a medical imaging and diagnostic. Here, as I already told you that very few radiologists are available in periphery. And if we develop such an app where all these images are, you know, uploaded and immediately that doctor in the periphery who is working in PSC and mostly they are BMS doctor, which cannot read these images. So if they get a diagnosis and we have protocols in place for all the diseases in healthcare department, so he can prescribe the medicine accordingly. Thirdly is uh, inventory management. As I told you earlier that certain diseases are rampant in certain areas and we get lots of medicine, then equipment, instrument. So with the help of AI, we, we will be able to allocate our logistic in a very proper way. So this, this is a very bright future for AI in private as well as uh, government sector. So, uh, you know, my colleague, uh, Dr. Murli, he is already doing all these things in his hospital. So he has developed a, um, a software called uh, Dr. M Hope uh, software, which he is using in his hospital to, since 2009. And now it is integrated with AI and it's very interesting. So you will be hearing from all these interesting stories from him and how it has helped even the government sector in this that he will tell in his talk. So I'm really thankful to BG and the team uh, for uh, having me here and letting me talk and uh, to you, BG. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, doctor. Um, one second. I want to welcome once again those who joined uh, now. There's a problem with the PowerPoint, once again. Are you able to see it? Yes, we can. Sorry. Yep, once again, sorry for that. My computer is freezing, I think. So many windows open. Sorry about it. So I want to welcome 
Dr. Murli BK, who is the main star of the event. What I have to say about Dr. Murli is that uh, we met in Dubai and I was pleasantly surprised about his passion for technology. I'm not going to read everything on the slide, but you can notice one thing that he's actually practicing and using AI in diagnostics and joint replacement. And he started speaking about AI from 2010 onwards. So nothing more to say now. He is a practicing doctor running a 100-bedded hospital, more than one hospital. And he's uh, very passionate and we are very glad to associate with him. And he was very kind enough to share his experience, his challenges and his knowledge of trying to adapt technology to enhance his uh, human expertise in delivering care. So without further delay, over to you, Dr. Murli. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Dr. Srijit uh, N. Kumar, organizing chairman of IMA National Conference. Uh, thank you, uh, BT. Thank you, Dr. Kanchin. Uh, thank you for the introduction, BT. Uh, I'm Dr. BK Murli, a uh, joint replacement surgeon and owner of two hospitals in Nagpur. We are using AI in our hospitals extensively. My presentation will have three recorded videos and hands-on demo of three modules on how exactly we use AI in our hospitals. Today's seminar is just an introductory webinar. We will have three more uh, in-depth uh, sessions with detailed AI modules that BT has already described. The next sessions will be on the 15th and 22nd December 2023 at 7 p.m. I remember last December, a young lady named Priyanka was working in our hospital. She was 22 and just had a baby girl. Priyanka started to feel very tired all the time, but she thought she was just sleepy because she was the new mom and that happens. One day at work, she felt so weak that she fainted. Our doctors were super busy, but one of them quickly checked her and said, it's dengue you will be okay soon. Sadly, the doctors made a mistake. It wasn't dengue, it was something worse, septicemia. And doctors didn't see it in time to help her get better. If we had a smart computer, if we had an AI software, like the ones we have now, it could have helped the doctors notice that mistake. Then maybe, Priyanka would have gotten the right help and could still be here playing with her little girl. Shortly uh, in today's presentation, I will demonstrate how we have an AI module called Anora ICU Insights, which can identify clinical deterioration even before the doctor can identify so that we don't miss helping people like Priyanka. You will find 50 such use cases of AI tools in our website, anora.com. The purpose of this webinar is to demystify technology in healthcare, dispel concerns, fortify trust in the innovative future of medicine. Let's take a moment here. I want all of you to put your name, city you belong to and your specialty in the chat box so that we can include some use cases in the demo according to your speciality. Here, I see some of my batchmates, uh, uh, they must be a little surprised to see our MBPS batchmates snap here. Sorry. I remember in 1986, I and Dr. Chadi, a radiologist 
stayed in the same hostel in Government Medical College and Hospital, Nagpur. During my MBBS days, we were very good friends. He was good at his work. He was a professor in radiology. His senior colleagues used to take his opinion. He could interpret CT scans and MRI very well. But then I remember recently in November 2022, he had continuous dull pain in his abdomen. He had vomiting. He underwent a CT scan. He being a radiologist, he could not, he tried to find out what his problem is. He could not find any abnormality. But unfortunately, within a few weeks, he died of pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is difficult to diagnose even by the best radiologist. This research paper was published just two weeks back. Using PANDA, PANDA, Pancreatic Cancer Detection with AI, which is a deep learning approach, we can detect CA pancreas, which even the best radiologists find difficult. The biggest shakeups in AI are going to be in the healthcare space. And things like these are constant proof of that evolution. When I think of AI and its fears, I often think the benefits of AI will always outweigh the things people are scared of. I think the advancements in the area are going to completely change the world. Integrating AI into my medical practice is now, it's about enhancing diagnostic precision and patient management efficiency. Despite initial challenges like cost, like learning curve, the motivation is clear to leverage technology to provide better proactive healthcare, ensuring no symptoms or condition goes unnoticed. AI is like a smart assistant that learns and makes decisions, helping us do tasks better and faster. This year, 2023, has been absolutely insane in the field of AI. Breakthroughs in generative AI, global increase in the use, ethical debates have intensified. AI aims to make computers learn, think, and understand like humans do. Artificial intelligence is widely used across various sectors, but the top three industries that prominently use AI are number one, healthcare, for predictive analytics, personalized medicine, and robotic surgery. Number two is technology, software development, robotics, data analysis. Number three is financial services, fraud detection, trading, risk management. There are slower industries, the slower to adopt AI. Small scale agriculture, retail business, artisan work. The two terms which we'll be using in our sessions repeatedly, prompt. What is prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is the process of crafting questions or instructions to effectively communicate with the AI and get the best possible responses or results. We'll also be talking about context or instructions. There's a, they are background inf information that helps explain the situation or setting for something in the software. If this concept is clear to you, type C in the chat. And if you need more explanation, type N for not clear. And just a little reminder, we have a special reveal planned for the end of the session. Trust me when I say it's going to be a highlight you will be delighted you stayed for. Let's continue with that exciting moment still ahead of us. 
Facebook took four years, six months to reach the users that ChatGPT reached in just two months. I first used AI after Priyanka died in our hospital. We started using AI to avert critical patient conditions, aid in diagnosing, compile discharge notes, and create outpatient summaries. I was able to adjust the language style in the patient education documents. I could request instructions in simple Hindi, and it would provide them in a conversational tone. Correct medical technologies were used in documents intended for other doctors. This capability was not possible with previous software. Productivity was enhanced in composing emails, certificates, content writing for social media marketing, among the other tasks. GPT-4 Turbo. It gives medical legal protection. It ensures that doctors are safeguarded in their practice. It's crucial to base each diagnosis, each treatment on referenced scientific literature. Bilingual discharge summaries and patient educational materials play a vital role in enhancing patient understanding and reducing errors in prescription and diagnosis. Detailed documentation is essential for accurate record keeping and facilitates for the treatment. Reviewing previous summaries of patients can help track their process and inform future care decisions. Leveraging AI to reduce document repetition and save time is a smart approach. Offering the paid version, we are offering the paid version without cost, demonstrating a commitment to using technology to benefit patients and healthcare professionals. Imagine the healthcare industry as an ocean. The giant wave approaching symbolizes the rapid and transformative changes in healthcare technology and market dynamics. As a modern medical entrepreneur standing on the shore, you have two choices. Get out your surfboard and ride the waves. This means embracing the changes, understanding and leveraging the latest technologies. It's about being proactive, innovative, and agile. Riding the wave successfully can lead to significant growth, new opportunities, and a strong position in the healthcare market. Or the second choice, stay inactive and risk being drowned. You can choose to ignore these changes or fail to adapt. If you do that, your business risks becoming irrelevant, just like a person who's engulfed by a giant wave. Because they didn't prepare or react, uh, a healthcare startup can be overwhelmed by technological advancements. If you agree with this point, type A in the chat. And if you disagree, type D. Let's see what you think. According to McKinsey, McKinsey, the healthcare landscape is rapidly evolving. A majority of executives believe in the transformative potential of AI. There is a looming global worker shortage in the healthcare sector. Significant cost savings are anticipated from the ad adoption of AI. The pharmaceutical market is experiencing growth. There is widespread patient dissatisfaction with current healthcare experiences. Data analytics challenges are impacting the shift to value-based care. So I have incorporated AI in three pivotal areas of healthcare. And today's webinar is just the tip of the iceberg. The subsequent three seminars will be in each of these topics. These include boosting patient involvement, optimizing clinical and operational effectiveness, 
and expediting advancements in medical science. The next two sessions will be on the 15th and the 22nd, December 2023. The session on the 15th will be at 7 p.m. and they will be on enhanced patient education. This image re represents a three triad approach to patient care coordination using AI technology. It highlights strategies for number one, engaging patients remotely at their homes. Number two, managing patients who visit for consultations in clinics. And number three, overseeing patients who are admitted to hospitals. Now, each of these peers represents a unique patient interaction point, demonstrating the comprehensive reach of AI across various healthcare sectors. The concept of custom GPT is quite fascinating. It's like having a digital Swiss army knife for your hospital. Versatile, adaptable, and always ready to perform a variety of tasks. Whether it's scheduling appointments, aiding in diagnostics, or managing patient data, a custom GPT could be the tech equivalent of a super efficient hospital assistant who never needs to take a coffee break. We have been using the latest GPT-4 Turbo, which is very powerful. I've seen a number of benefits. We have successfully integrated into our legacy SaaS-based cloud software. This customized GPT could offer services to our clients right in their homes. This also reduces human error, enables 24-hour operation, leading to cost reduction. Additionally, it facilitates radiological diagnosis in remote areas, serves as, as an extra excellent treatment substitute and provides second opinions. As we nav navigate through today's discussion, keep in mind that we have reserved something quite extraordinary for the conclusion of our webinar. I encourage everyone to stay with us until the end for a truly special surprise that you won't want to miss. This picture shows how we use smart AI to keep health records in order and have 50 special chatbots for 50 use cases to help with different tasks in our hospital. I created about 50 Anora AI solution chatbots. Each was created for a specific purpose. I and many power users had to maintain a list of carefully crafted prompts and instruction sets, manually copying them into G GPT till a few months back. But now Anora chatbots will do all that for me. It has been trained now. I believe the most incredible healthcare AI solutions will come from doctor builders in the medical community. Doctors know the pain points and they will come up with solutions. We have made Anora chatbots fresher and simpler to use. This is my number one prediction of the future. This is what we in Betsa and Hope Hospital truly believe. The one, the ones unyielding ivory towers of medicine are crumbling. Imagine a world where the boundaries of healthcare are redefined, where the traditional halls of hospitals and clinics transform into a more fluid dynamic system. This is not a distant future. This is the culmination of a journey in digital health, a journey that is redefining the very essence of patient care. Healthcare is changing. Hospitals and clinics are not the only places for care anymore. Now patients and doctors work as a team. 
This change is because of digital health. Patients are becoming the center of care. It doesn't matter if they are at home, in the car, or somewhere else. Care comes to them. Of course, for big emergencies or special tests, hospitals are still needed. But mostly care happens wherever the patient is. This new way of making healthcare easy to reach, it fits into our daily lives. This is what digital health is all about. It's about bringing healthcare to you, wherever you are. Got a question? Type Q and your question in the chat. Let's make the session interactive. How many cues do we have? Remote health monitoring and telemedicine is available now. Wearable technology is available now. Wearables like smartwatch, smart ring, continuous glucose monitoring chips and other health monitoring devices can continuously track vital health metrics, providing real-time data to healthcare providers. Telemedicine platforms are here. Video consultations, digital communication tools, enable doctors to diagnose, advise, treat patients remotely. Home-based medical services are available in Anora. Medicine delivery, medications can be prescribed digitally, delivered directly to the patient's location, ensuring timely access to necessary treatments. Mobile phlebotomy is available for lab tests. Mobile phlebotomy services can collect blood samples at the patient's preferred location. This not only adds convenience, but also reduces the need for hospital visits. Integration of digital health records is available. We use it in hopesoftwares.com. There is a seamless information flow. Digital health records ensure that the patient data is accessible to authorized health providers, regardless of the care setting. Regarding data security and privacy, we have ensured that the security, confidentiality of the patient data is paramount in, in the softwares that we use. What are the future trends? Virtual reality and augmented reality. Utilizing VR, AR for patient education, physical therapy, and enhancing telemedical consultations. These are the future trends. Hope and Aishman hospitals, which I own, had a total of 200 beds during COVID. All the beds were full. We had to cater to patients at home who could not get hospital beds. Anora chatbots were innovated at that time. This image about talks about AI in healthcare during COVID-19. AI gives real-time patient services on any device. It screens for COVID-19 using chart interfaces. The goal is to make care more accessible. It also aims to improve the quality of care. Lastly, it wants to lower healthcare costs for everyone. The image shows trends in healthcare. Most patients want digital access to their medical history. They like to book appointments online. Patients are willing to use wearable health devices. They have also started using virtual appointments for their health needs. Can you imagine robots doing tasks like in this picture? Will it apply crepe bandages? Will they apply plaster casts? Personally, I don't see how AI can replace doctors. It'll be a helpful companion, like a super smart parrot, but not sure many would like a prostate examination by a robot. Our tele-doctor bot is trained to be a nurse, not a doctor. If a patient asks for medical advice, it will not give medical advice. It will not give clinical advice. It is trained to collect history only. 
But then we have other AI tools which help doctors in high level medical record keeping and even research. So here I'm going to demonstrate the teledoctor module in anora.com. The site I will demo is anora.com. Uh, the URL will be uh, shared with you in the chat. I will type the site uh, in the chat box for your convenience. Uh, here I'll be demonstrating uh, uh, assistant uh, who helps in telemedicine. So feel free uh, to uh, interact. Uh, okay, let's go. Today I have uh, not made it mandatory for you to register in the site. So you can straight away go and uh, click on the bot and start using it. Tele, tele doctor. So the purpose of demonstrating is to show you how I have trained the chat bot. So this is the tele doctor page in Anora. So we have trained it uh, specifically for our hospital and doctors. We'll show you how it can uh, collect payments. It can organize a video call and also notice it will never give medical advice. Uh, at the same time, it will show empathy to the patients. So let's, uh, let's copy paste prompts here. So, so there's this uh, person uh, who has a knee pain and he wants a consultation from an orthopedic surgeon. So let's see what the response is. <clears throat> so this uh, site, uh, the anura.com has about uh, 50 AI tools. We have, okay. It, so that, this is the response. So it is suggesting that uh, Dr. Murli is the consultation it gives uh, the consultation piece. Next prompt. Keep, uh, keep the prompts ready. So I have with me uh, Pragati and Naman. They are helping me with uh, the demo. So I've asked them to just uh, paste, okay? So, but huh, it has already said that uh, Dr. Muldi is an orthopedic surgeon, so that's okay. Let's see what answer it uh, gives us. Yeah, keep the next uh, prompt ready. So let's say, um, the patient wants an appointment at 4 p.m. at 17th on 17th December. So it's giving other orthopedic surgeons in my hospital. Then it's also so notice uh, how the communication is uh, progressing. So there's a time and date that I want an, uh, the, the client wants an appointment. <clears throat> so it is asking for uh, allergy, uh, any history of allergy, past uh, medical conditions, past surgeries. Can you scroll up a little? There are, huh. So the, it is asking if uh, what are the current medications I'm taking, then uh, any pre-existing medical conditions. So you can answer to that. Uh, so let me just answer that uh, you have no uh, conditions. Uh, 
and you just want uh, to proceed with the appointment. I don't have. Any past. Yes, history. Dr. Dr. Murli. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Dr. Madhuri Tamsare has raised her hand. So okay. she has got a question now. Okay. Can you type uh, Dr. Madhuri in the chat and we'll raise it? Thank you. Sorry. Continue. So uh, it says, thank you for confirming there's no past history. And if you notice, it has given me a link, a Zoom link probably. Yeah? Uh, the razor pay links that, so that I can pay and uh, scroll down. There is a link, uh, a Zoom link also. Uh, no, no, that's the Google, Google map of the place where uh, in case uh, they want a physical consult. Okay. So can you click on the razor pay link? Let's uh, check if it works. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it works. Good. So uh, can you put the last few questions here? Uh, okay. Let's ask if uh, if Dr. Murli can give advice on diabetes. So Dr. Murli is an orthopedic surgeon. So it says he's an orthopedic surgeon. There are other doctors uh, who can take care of uh, the diabetes. So it's a very smart chatbot. If you notice, uh, it has answers very specific to our hospital, to our doctors, and we have trained it. So this training is possible for your practice, for your the hospitals that you work in. So shall we move on? Uh, Let's move on to the next slide. As doctor, we can't hear anything. Yeah, on this is option. Just a minute. Uh, share screen. Uh, first full screen. Make this full screen. Yeah, that is okay. Let's move on. Okay, in the next, uh, I have a video to share uh, on AI in front of this. Okay. So here, mm, Here I'll show you a video where uh, there is this coffee shop using AI. So it, this coffee shop uh, uses AI to measure employee productivity 
and the time spent by each customer inside the coach. So the green uh, figures are actually how much time each customer spends in the coffee shop. And the ones in the blue on the right side is measuring employee productivity. How many cups have they given? <clears throat> so uh, can it be used in hospital front office? Uh, is it exciting or frightening? Exciting if the owner is having good intention, he will reward the good employee. Frightening if the owner's intention is bad and um, he or she will be penalized for non-performing employees. Uh, and of course, there are privacy ethical considerations. So in the healthcare front office, AI can optimize uh, appointment scheduling, it can streamline patient registration, it can enhance the overall service efficiency. So you can try uh, this uh, chatbot. Uh, there is this uh, chatbot which is uh, hospital services for inpatients. So if you uh, go to anhora.com, so this, uh, this is available for the patients who are already admitted in the hospital. So it is trained daily with the daily visiting hours of each specialist in the hospital. Now this can change every day. The menu in the hospital canteen or whom to contract, contact for laundry. So all these little things, uh, the services that we provide inside the hospital uh, is available in, in a chat board, which can be used by the patient already admitted in the bed in the hospital. So I want to share another video. I want to share the story of my wife, the story of Sonia, how AI changed her life. But before that, uh, we have this research paper published just last week where cardiologists have developed an AI algorithm that can predict AFib a month before onset. The AI does this by identifying subtle changes in ECG patterns. We have been seeing some insane developments in the last few months in the field of healthcare. So this is one of them. Let's watch the video of Sonia the name has been changed. Just give us a moment. I'm sorry. Do we have? Or... We'll come back to the video again. Uh, let's move ahead. Uh, share screen. This again is a demo. Uh, can you do the demo? Uh, so let's do a demo of uh, ECG, X-ray, clinical images. Share screen, okay. So this, uh, I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, custom GPT that I've trained. So I'll share the link uh, later in the chat board. Uh, 
to use this model module today, you need a paid version of ChatGPT, but we are introducing it as an AI tool in Anora this week. Uh, and you can use it without any financial obligation. Here, I will be demonstrating three modules. So uh, feel free to use it and check for yourself. Okay, uh, here we have, uh, it's reading x-rays, uh, CT scans. So here's the CT brain. Uh, so it's uh, able to diagnose uh, these images. Uh, can you scroll down? Yeah. So when I ask uh, what is the radiological abnormality and diagnosis, uh, it says it's Wilson's disease. Uh, and it says it's the face of giant panda sign. So if there are any neurosurgeons or neuro uh, neurologists, uh, I would like to know in the chat if uh, it was a correct diagnosis. Uh, can you scroll down? Let's go to the next case. So I showed a clinical photograph with a skin abnormality and I asked for the diagnosis. And uh, okay, can you go down? So it not necessarily every time it comes with the diagnosis, but here it is a rare condition so it gives a diagnosis that uh, rosacea is the clinical diagnosis. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it says that there is no specific test for this condition. It can sometimes be confused with other skin conditions like uh, lupus. So if there are some dermatologists in the audience, I would like to know if uh, this is appropriate or not. Uh, can you share in the chat? Uh, let's go down further. Then there is, uh, uh, go down, okay. So huh, there is this clinical photograph with, which I shared and uh, I asked for a diagnosis. Let's see what it says. So it's, uh, it's uh, describing the skin condition, then... Uh, Scleroderma, dermatitis. Uh, so it's it's giving differential diagnosis also. So it's not it's describing why it is giving the diagnosis. Can you scroll down? So, huh? But the diagnosis was this condition, Harlequin. So later when I asked if it is Harlequin, then it says yes. So it's uh, uh, it may not be accurate, but we need to chat with it, and uh, it will then come up with uh, answers. So uh, it cannot be used by patients. It has to be uh, used by doctors, and they have to uh, decide what it is giving. Is it right or not? And there are times when uh, it can hallucinate. So you you cannot uh, take it uh, on face value. <clears throat> Okay, so sometimes it refuses to diagnose. Uh, this is a case of uh, uh, chronic pancreatitis. Let's see uh, what it says. Uh, can you scroll down? So uh, it did not give an answer. So if the if the image is not very clear, uh, it may not uh, give an answer. Next. So there are various images I tried and uh, but then it gives differential diagnosis. Uh, we are closer to the answer. Okay, next. Okay, and uh, I asked uh, this question, what this skin lesion is. Uh, but then, uh, uh, okay, it, it's called recall dermatitis. So uh, it is uh, some, it's caused by a chemotherapy drug. Okay, Stephen Johnson's, and I uh, shared this photograph. I asked what this is, uh, but then uh, the answer was wrong. So you need to use your judgment. <clears throat> Next, then I shared this uh, ECG. I asked if there's any abnormality and it gave a detailed interpretation of this ECG. Uh, so if there are any cardiologists, I'd like to know from them. 
if if this is what uh, they expect uh, then there are other ecgs which are shared and it gave me abnormalities then i shared a patient with a stress fracture in the metatarsal bone uh, scroll down uh, but it didn't give an answer uh, so uh, either the image was not clear uh, but we we uh, most of the time uh, it's right uh, okay can you go down uh, even though the, this is a fractured neck femur it could not diagnose but uh, obvious fractures stress fractures uh, hairline fractures it diagnoses okay so there uh, it says it's a hairline fracture okay this uh, uh, this is obviously clubbing and it could identify clubbing so let's uh, see how we can uh, upload an x-ray and just check what it has to say uh, ECG, yeah. Let's upload an ECG and check. Doctor, there are some questions on the Q&A, but uh, we can answer later. Yes. So um, in the first go, it may not answer, but uh, you, you need to tell uh, the chatbot that uh, it's not uh, like we, uh, we are doctors and we are wanting a second opinion because it's been trained to tell that, uh, 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 you know, uh, it's not a doctor and uh, it, it cannot give you diagnosis. So there are ways we train the chatbot in the back end so that it is helpful for doctors. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, right. Next. So we have a tool for education. We are able to prepare uh, students for exams. We are able to uh, prepare the students for interviews, Viva, uh, and we have uh, uploaded PDFs of international Indian te textbooks as knowledge in chatbots to help in medical education. Okay, just a reminder, we have a special reveal planned for the end of the session. Trust me when I say it's going to be a highlight. You'll be delighted you stayed for. Next. Let's uh, do another demo. Uh, discharge somebody chatbot. So th th this will be a little slow. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, we need to you know share screen, shift to another system and all. So just bear with us and we will show you something very interesting so so here um, so this is what uh, is our software what we use okay this is a uh, 13 year old software it was a saas based cloud application and now we have integrated ai in the software so this is a ipd module so here we have all the inpatients uh, in queues or you, so let's pick up one patient and uh, let's uh, try and prepare a discharge, discharge summary. So let's, which is the patient we are choosing? Okay, this. So we have this uh, drop down where we select discharge summary.
so so when you see uh, you know you it already populates lots of things like it has already populated the history examination findings these are all lab tests so every patient's uh, uh, lab tests are automatically populated from the lab so from the top box to the bottom box we we uh, select the lab tests which are relevant and uh, and then scroll down so at the end of the discharge summary you know we have this uh, uh, place where whatever details we need to add we add and it not necessarily they have to be in a sequence or they can be you know just uh, random but they all have to be proper of the patient so now there's a button which says fetch fetch data so what it does it gets all the data of the patient right from diagnosis uh, the clinical history the uh, blood examination the uh, radiological uh, tests all are collected all are fetched and brought in this uh, text box now we message chat gpt uh, meaning uh, you have not added the prompt no so now uh, in our uh, software we add a prompt so let's add a prompt so we have prompts here as templates so for a discharge summary this is the prompt and now when you click on the prompt uh, button above so all that text is uh, is now brought into the text box below so now you have the patient data and the prompt now you message all this text data and the prompt to the ai so let's message so now this goes to ai and we get a proper summary so can you show us a summary uh, can you get all this data to our uh, anura chatbot so on the top you'll see all the patient data it includes all the test reports the diagnosis the clinical history everything and we have a trained a chatbot for preparing discharge summaries now all this is uh, sent uh, to ai and it then replies with a very structured so here so it has the diagnosis and it has all the drugs with uh, certain instructions in hindi so they all appear proper in a table so so this is uh, about the ipd let's go to the opd how opd summaries are made so the, a detailed uh, ipd summary uh, is sent so if, if there is a patient in opd so let's check let's select a patient and let's prepare a consultation summary now, now here again uh, we have all the uh, history uh, we have a tab which says on examination where all examination findings are put then we have diagnosis then we have uh, then we can go to summarize so here in summarize uh, here again we have a text box in the bottom which says fetch data so when you click on the fetch data all this information that you have gathered in the emr all that is fetched into this text box and then you add a, a opd summary uh, prompt and uh, what once you add the prompt the all the data and the prompt goes to ai and you get a summary so 
finally, uh, you, the response is what you see on the right. So we'll share all the URLs uh, in the chat. So you can try it out uh, and we'll give you uh, credentials of hopesofwares.com and uh, anora.com and uh, you uh, you will be able to try it out. And uh, for today, we are not uh, uh, asking you to log, uh, log in or sign in or register. You can straight away go and use the chatbots. So just for today, we have uh, uh, just skip the registration part of the software. And the purpose of demonstrating this is uh, how we are able to train these tools for our hospital, for our doctors specifically, and how it can prepare documents the way we want. Uh, and also, uh, you must have noticed that the clinical data, the EMR that you enter can be in any sequence. So you, you can put your diagnosis first and then the history, or you can put your lab test first and, and then uh, the diagnosis. So it doesn't have to be structured, but the response will be structured without any uh, spelling mistake, without any grammatical mistake. You know how chat GPT works and uh, that's how it will be. And you can always uh, use your uh, language that you prefer. It can be uh, your local language, Malayalam, or it could be Marathi and it will give you certain, uh, if you want only the instructions in the prescription to be in the local language, it will give you only that. So all that can be trained. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, type I followed by your idea. Let's brainstorm together. Okay, let's, uh, while I wait for you, let me share a screen. So according to McKinsey, in our billing tool, we have incorporated, uh, so th these are all uh, uh, data according to McKinsey. So you know how important billing is for hospitals. So in our billing tool, we have incorporated all the corporate and private patient billing rules as instructions. The AI tool can prepare bills with the proper code. So during COVID, corporate billing was done using certain algorithms developed with AI. And that saved the hospital a lot of money. We have trained Anora bot on various tariffs like CGHs, ECHs, Aishman, Yojana, etc. So we just need to enter the surgery name and it'll give, you, give us the code for billing. It will also suggest what surgery names can be clubbed for complete billing. So you can train the billing AI tool to your needs. And if you have a specific format of the bill, you can train it uh, in, uh, so that uh, the response is in that particular format. <coughs> and regarding optimizing medical decision-making in Anora research. The current challenges are that the traditional models of medical decision-making, they are often slow, burdened by a large learning curve. This is exacerbated by the rapid pace at which new research is published. Thousands of articles are added to databases like PubMed every week, and it is nearly doctors to stay completely up to date. What is Anora's solution? How do we do it? So we have created customized databases that 
integrates PubMed articles, uh, wisdom from selected YouTube channels, and experience-based knowledge. So Anura aims to streamline the de decision-making process. This allows for a more comprehensive and current understanding of medical knowledge. This is tailored to the doctor's uh, speciality and interests. Regarding uh, incorporating AI and machine learning, the challenge in learning from analytics are that the traditional methods of learning from medical data and analytics are cumbersome and inefficient. So what is our approach? What is Anura's approach is that yeah, you, we utilize AI to analyze and interpret the vast uh, data and it can significantly reduce the time and effort required for doctors to stay informed. AI can identify patterns, it can suggest relevant articles and even provide insights that might not be immediately obvious to the human readers. Now about custom GPT integration in Anora research. So we use uh, custom GPT models to respond to queries by scrapping uh, information from videos, articles, and other resources. Now this can significantly enhance clinical decision-making, research, and educational endeavors. And the system can assist in various aspects such as understanding drug interactions, optimizing surgical techniques, and providing evidence-based answers to complex clinical questions. For clinicians, Anura Research offers real-time assistance in clinical decision-making. This tool helps to choose the best course of action for patients based on the latest research and collective wisdom. For researchers, educators, uh, it can be invaluable. It aids uh, research projects and in uh, postgraduate education. It uh, provides a rich resource of updated information and insights. So I will demonstrate Anura research in the third session. As uh, time is pressing, we'll, let's move on to the next. As an organization, as a hospital group, we conduct a lot of workshops and conferences and AI helps in uh, session topic ideas, in the structure of the uh, event agenda, the, the copywriting, etc. So let's uh, play a video, the AI pin. We have been experimenting with this device that works on uh, chat GPT. It provides enhanced decision support for surgeons. It can be worn on a headband or cap and AI pins could provide real time data analysis during surgeries. For instance, in orthopedic surgery, they could assist in precision bone alignment or joint replacement by analyzing angles, measurements, and movements, offering guidance for more accurate and efficient procedures. In regards to patient monitoring, post-operative monitoring could be revolutionized with AI pins. They can track healing. Meet Sonia, a woman. Welcome to a new era at Hope Hospital, where we blend cutting edge technology with compassionate care. Today, we are excited to showcase the latest addition to our surgical toolkit, the AI pin, a wearable device revolutionizing the operating room. Imagine a tool that integrates seamlessly into the surgical environment, providing crucial information with a simple gesture. The AI pin worn on the headband allows surgeons to maintain sterility while accessing data, guidelines, and tools hands-free. This wearable device powered by OpenAI responds to hand gestures, offering a sterile touch-free way to interact with technology during critical procedures. With the AI pin, surgeons can 
effortlessly swipe through patient records, view surgical protocols, or access real-time translations of medical terms, all without touching a screen or a button. It's like having a digital assistant providing information right when and where it's needed. This innovation is more than just a technological leap. It's a step towards safer, more efficient surgical procedures. The AIP represents our commitment to embracing technology that enhances patient care and supports our medical staff. At Hope Hospital, we are not just adopting new technology, we are pioneering it. Join us as we redefine the boundaries of medical care, one innovation at a time. Follow our journey into the future of healthcare. Okay, uh, let's play another video, the ICU Insights. Uh, and maybe I can explain while the video is being played. So imagine uh, ICU ha with a smart helper, uh, ICU Insights, always watching over patients. It's like a guardian angel uh, spotting problems early so doctors can act fast. So with this AI, we will more people say it's healthy. So here, uh, this is the process flow of septicemia, and uh, uh, we have uh, the score. Okay, so let's. Uh, th this is the score for septicemia, where uh, we are able to analyze. That's this algorithm called Trues. Uh, Trues is targeted real time early warning system. So we are able to uh, measure the deterioration of a patient. So when a patient in the ICU uh, with septicemia is worsening, so uh, does this point a uh, given uh, to identify that the patient is worsening? And according to that point, a color is allotted. So if, if the patient has a red color, that means the patient is deteriorating. If the patient is stable, it's yellow. And if the patient is uh, improving, it's green. Yeah, continue. So here uh, we have this algorithm. See, if you notice, uh, we are uh, we get all the patient data, the EHR data, the blood tests, the radiological tests, the history, the genetic the genome studies. So all the data is collected and analyzed, and uh, it's then pushed into AI, and we are able to predict. Uh, the outcome. So every day this can be done. We run all these every day morning so that uh, by the time the consultant is on rounds, they are, the, all the patients are color coded and we know which are the patients to attend to first. So it's like uh, triaging the ICU patients. Okay. Can we... So yeah, this is our software that we use, where it's the electronic medical, medical report, where all the data is collected, including the report. The, so every ICU patient, there are like hundreds and hundreds of reports. They are all gathered, pushed into AI, and then, uh, so the, this is an example of a patient who had mild pneumonia. Oh, okay, can we hold here? Okay, see, uh, this is a patient, 52 years old, male, with pneumonia. So uh, what is the response from AI? And when we ask for a proper uh, point system, so uh, let's move ahead. So this is day one. So day one, let's see what's the color. So the color is yellow. So stable patient. And it even gives the literature, the scientific literature on which uh, this is based on. So let's hold, yeah, this is day two. Okay, the day two, the patient is worsening. Okay, uh, decreased responsiveness, a drop in blood pressure. So uh, what, are, what are the uh, responses? So, okay. Now the, from the jumbo cord, the patient is shifted to the ICU. So it's saying consider vasopressor support. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, now the color is red. Patient is deteriorating. 
So then the consultant has to attend to this patient first. So, uh, and it gives you the literature. So when you have the scientific literature uh, in your record on, on the basis of uh, deciding what to do next, so your medical legal needs protected. So this is day six. Now the patient has written. Uh, so, so you have a post septic shock uh, scenario. Yeah, go ahead. So here, the color coding is green, meaning improvement. And again, there is literature reference. There is a score. There is a proper uh, structured way of treating a patient with septicemia and such. Okay. So uh, we have a free trial of the software that we are using in our hospital. So this is an opportunity which is available only for a few days. There is no financial obligation. I am just doing so that uh, I can share the fruits with you all. And uh, let's imagine uh, a tool which is so powerful that it can predict when an ICU patient's condition might worsen. That's the mm -hmm. GPT module at Hope Hospital. If this cutting edge technology can prevent even a single loss of life, it's beyond worth the investment. And it's not just about saving life. Our productivity models are saving something just as precious, time. Our staff are reclaiming nearly 30% of their time, which means more moments for what truly matters, family. This is the value of AI in healthcare. This is Hope Hospital where every second counts for both our patients and our team. Thank you, IMA organizing chairman, Dr. Srijit N. Kumar, Betsa team, BT, JJ and AB for this wonderful opportunity. Your support is immensely appreciated. Thank you, Dr. Kanchan Wandri for joining us. It's been a privilege to share our journey and insights with you all. Thank you truly for being such an engaged and thoughtful audience. Thank you, Dr. Murli. That was amazing. Thank you for taking the pain of putting it up together and sharing. I know it is not easy. A lot of work is required to do this seamlessly and I thank all the team. Um, just one more last thing to go is to just the, you know, word of thanks uh, as per the agenda. As I mentioned earlier, this is only first part of a four part series. The next will be happening next uh, Friday, uh, two Fridays, but in the evening time, we will share the details with you. If you're interested, you can join. I uh, welcome uh, Jean John, uh, she is the co-founder and CEO of Betzer Life. She is actually the driving force behind Betzer. She is very passionate about helping people, uh, going the extra mile, and you know she is driving the change uh, selflessly. So I really appreciate her for that. And I welcome Jean to give a short uh, thank you message. Thank you, BT. Thank you. Thank you, BT. Good afternoon, everyone. Artificial intelligence is not a substitute for human intelligence. It is a tool to uplift, amplify human creativity. On behalf of Betzer, thank you to each and everyone who attended this workshop today, being a Sunday, and for your patient listening. Thanking all the eminent doctors from IMA, our doctors who are on our Betzer panel, and our distinguished advisory board members who have taken their time to be here today 
and have expressed interest to join the upcoming sessions. Thank you, Dr. Srijit N. Kumar, Chairman, Organizing Committee of Tarang, 98th National Conference IMA, for being here and for your warm message. Thank you for sharing this event as a prelude to the upcoming IMA National Conference. Thank you, Dr. Murli BK, a doctor with a passion for technology, owner of Open Ayushman Hospital, who is also one of our eminent doctors on Betsa panel. Thank you for sharing your experience and knowledge, your commitment in touching lives positively through innovation and compassion resonates with Betsa, which is truly inspiring. I would also like to thank Dr. Kanjan Maneri, Deputy Director of Health Services, Nagpur, for being here and sharing your perspective from a public health point of view with respect to the importance of AI. Thank you, BT, BG Thomas, CEO of Betsa, for taking the initiative of conducting this four-part informational series for doctors. Finally, I would like to thank the Hope Hospital team and Betsa team for your tireless work behind the scenes, which has been instrumental in making this workshop a grand success. Thank you all once again for your patient listening, participation and support. Let us all unite together in our commitment to touch lives and make a positive impact through technology and innovation. Have a great day. Thank you. I just want doctor to take a moment to answer the questions because we forgot to answer the questions. So there are only very few. So uh, Dr. Kanjan, do you want to share the questions to Dr. Murli and we can quickly answer them? Yeah, I have a list of questions in front of me. Okay, uh, can you please go ahead and answer? Yeah. Uh, what is the legal status of AI in healthcare in India and international? See, uh, uh, we uh, in India, there are right now, there are no rules as such for AI in healthcare. Uh, internationally, the whatever rules apply for softwares regarding uh, uh, privacy norms, uh, the HIPAA, uh, they are the rules. And uh, uh, basically, the, uh, the privacy of the patient has to be taken care of. The data uh, uh, should be secure. Uh, that's the international norm. And uh, we will share uh, in the chat uh, uh, a write-up about uh, what are the privacy and security uh, norms that uh, uh, we in Hope Hospital follow in our softwares. And uh, so there, there was one uh, question from Dr. Anupam Ahuja. Uh, which uh, says, can I see a demo using AI in orthopedic practice? Yes, I'm an orthopedic surgeon and uh, I use AI extensively and uh, we will share uh, the links with you and uh, we, we will uh, help you uh, in uh, using our modules, our AI tools in orthopedic practice. And I uh, see this is just the tip of the iceberg. What we spoke today was just an introduction. We would want you to join us uh, in the subsequent uh, sessions. The next session is on the 15th, uh, 7 p.m. So why don't you join and we will discuss, uh, we'll take up use cases in orthopedics and we will discuss it. So uh, there is one Dr. Jitendra Shah who says, uh, who has asked, can AI predict outcome according to diagnosis? Yes. Uh, uh, that is what I showed. Uh, uh, so there are two ways uh, of uh, prediction. Uh, one is uh, critical patients who are in the ICU. So we are able to predict, predict if uh, the patient is deteriorating, whether the patient is stable, improving. So be, even before uh, doctors can identify, uh, AI can identify. So that uh, so I told you how in the video, and we will do it in more detail in the session, which is uh, uh, which will be the uh, session on the twenty second. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, we'll be focusing more on how to use AI for doctors. So that is the session uh, you should definitely attend. And uh, there is one Dr. Sajesh Balraj. 
will uh, recording be available? So uh, BT will be able to answer if recording will be available or not. Yeah, um, so recording is not available. Uh, we did a lot of, uh, you know, not so perfect job uh, because it's our first attempt. We will even become better in the subsequent. Uh, you know, there are a lot of content available online for AI, you know, any topic you can search, right? Tons of videos and educational content. So if I give you the recording, it will be one among those. It will sit somewhere. And I'm sure you will say that I will watch it at some time and it's never going to happen. And the information what we share today will become very obsolete. I mean, obsolete very fast because technology is changing. Today, doctor showed about AI PIN. I'm sure in coming days and weeks and months, you will see the you know integration of AI into surgical and actual practice uh, through wearable devices of doctors. Uh, seamlessly AI... Uh, in real uh, time or near real time advising doctors to take decisions. So I don't think this is a like a digital uh, course to, to give the recording. This is more kind of an interactive session, um, feedback from people and, and trying to see what is actually needed and what is actually uh, practical and uh, used in a real hospital, in a real environment, and Dr. Murli sharing. So I would say that we would do repeat sessions of the same, even perfecting slides and images, videos, and everything better. But we don't uh, intend to give out the recorded sessions. And there was a, there's a question from Dr. Madhu Shah. Uh, she is. She asked, "Is it economically feasible to introduce AI in rural areas where number of healthcare workers are uh, comparatively low?" Bread. So yes, uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Kanchan Banari uh, told us, uh, we our mission is to reach uh, the underprivileged, the underserved. So we would want uh, the doctors who are serving in PHCs to use our tools. And we, we are not going to charge them. We are going to give it away for the poor so that they benefit from the advancements in here. So over to you, BD. That's, the, the, that's all. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, one more thing. Can you just show the uh, free trial for doctors to try out that poster? I can stop sharing. So those who want to take advantage. Thank you. So basically, doctor is offering with no financial obligation for you to try out what he is using. I think it's a great opportunity. It won't be perfect, but it's something which you can try out and it will become better as we use it more and more. And it, the, the technology is out there for you to use it. And Betzer and uh, I hope uh, hospital, uh, Dr. Murli in particular, are keen about uh, helping and increasing the participation of the doctor. So we are always here. So looking forward to see you in the next session. And there is a WhatsApp group. If you are interested, you can join. We will uh, share some relevant information. Of course, we guarantee that we will not spam. We will not send anything which is not required specific to this topic and the upcoming sessions. Uh, so is there any other question or shall we? So there are... What is the role of AI in hospital management, including staff management? There's a question, doctor. Yeah. And also, uh, what is the role of AI in OP patient management, not appointments, but in case management? This is from Dr. Babur Rafiq and uh, Dr. Sri Kumar Ramachandran. Do you want me to read the question again, doctor? No, uh, that's okay. Uh, the, the question is about uh, the OPD, uh, the consultation, right? So, uh, like I told you, uh, we have these modules in anora.com. 
So we have shared the link of anura.com uh, in the chat. And uh, there are various modules. There are 50 use cases, various scenarios. You can try it out. And uh, uh, you can ask me if uh, you have any questions. Uh, so we have uh, for, for the doctor's uh, uh, purpose, we have about uh, four or five chatbots. So you, you can try out those chatbots. There are various AI tools for doctors which you can use. And uh, please attend the sessions that we are going to have on the 15th, 7 p.m. So it is there that we will give you hands-on demo of all the AI tools that I use in my hospital. Over to you, BT. Yeah, just one question to clarify, doctor. So when you said that this is absolutely no obligation means they don't need to pay for um, chat GPT subscription. They simply can use, they simply logging in and, and use the tools which you are using. Am I correct? Yeah, that's right. There's no need uh, for uh, any subscription with chat GPT. So they can use the latest uh, uh, software, uh, uh, the latest versions in anora.com without any subscription. All right. One more question, doctor, from Dr. Srikumar Ramachandran. What is the role of AI in hospital management, including staff management? Yeah, very interesting question. Uh, thank you, uh, Sri Kumar, for the question. See, what we have done is uh, we have uh, we are able to roster the staff using AI. Uh, like Kanchan uh, told us, you no, know, that they, they even uh, used it to transfer their employees. There were thousands of employees, and they they had certain rules in the department. Similarly. Uh, in, uh, in hospitals, we have some rules. We have rules which say that uh, there will be one weekly off, there will be uh, off uh, after a night duty, or uh, the, the, the every nurse has to do two morning, two evening, and then two night. So these are the rules. So we jot down all these rules, and we train the AI tool with these rules. And we, we put down uh, the names of the staff and according to the rules, it will roster the staff. And we we even tried that when it's Diwali, uh, we we uh, we know that the Hindu staff uh, will uh, want to go on leave, and uh, we we'll have to replace them with uh, uh, staff of other religion. So we put even that in as a uh, knowledge uh, for the AI tool, and we were a, uh, and the AI tool on Diwali uh, knew who whom to be posted on that day, uh, and who will most likely uh, want a, uh, you know leave on that day. So there are rules which you can make every day, and you can train the AI tool every day. So in case there is a sudden uh, absenteeism, uh, there are two people not coming, you just have to uh, put down that the, these two staff are not uh, available today. And it will give you a, a revised uh, you know, uh, a roster for that day, for, for, for another few days. So all this are possible now. It is, uh, you can train the AI tool for your requirement, for your industry, for your specific company, the rules that you have made for your hospital. So that is how um, we uh, how we are able to use this tool and uh, enhance uh, you know productivity. Doctor, um, first of all, thank you, AB, for putting that. If any questions are not answered here, we can answer it offline. But <clears throat> I want to read a comment from uh, Dr. Carolyn a call man from Australia. So she has said that AI is not able to predict the outcomes in ICU patients as most patients have diverse comorbidities which are not identified. In Australia, we are not happy to use it in ICU. So do you have any comments, doctor? Yeah. See, uh, uh, first of all, AI can only assist doctors and the doctors have to take a decision whether to accept what AI is suggesting to them or not. 
So we have identified certain uh, pain points uh, of uh, doctors. Uh, what is it that uh, they need from AI? So we have identified uh, prediction, uh, deterioration of patients in the ICU as one of the pain points. Similarly, there, uh, there could be other pain points. There, uh, in diagnosing complex uh, uh, diseases, like uh, th there was uh, this patient who had uh, uh, an overdose of a medication and uh, that patient had symptoms and we were not able to identify uh, the diagnosis. And uh, when we put down everything that we had, all the test reports, all the history, all the examination findings, and we were surprised to find out that the AI suggested that the, the symptoms, the palpitation, the chest pain was because of uh, increased dose of uh, thyroxine. And when we immediately decreased the dose, the patient was absolutely fine. So there are times when we humans miss out on certain things, on certain uh, small data, but the AI, or AI doesn't miss out on the data. It'll take every little bit of information that you provide the AI and it'll suggest what could be uh, a diagnosis. It'll suggest various di differential diagnosis. And I, I can personally tell you that I, lots of my patients have benefited by using AI. Thank you, doctor. Thanks, Dr. Carolyn. I know that uh, uh, you know it's a very interesting topic and those who are staying now are really interested to learn. Uh, we had uh, 300 plus registrations and more than 100 uh, people at some point of time. Right now, we still have 56 people on the call, which shows that the amount of uh, interest which uh, people have in the su subject. We will try to better our event, make it more um, seamless without any glitches in the repeat sessions. Uh, but currently, we are looking forward to seeing you in the next event, which is on Friday, uh, and we will send you the timing. And that will be uh, based on your questions and also a deeper dive on the patient engagement part of AI. Thank you once again, uh, Dr. Murli. It's amazing. And Dr. Kanjan, thank you for being there, helping us. Thank you, Betsa team, and uh, uh, also the technical team uh, with Dr. Murli and Hope Hospital team. Thank you, Betsa. Uh, panel doctors, advisory board members, uh, and everybody who made this possible. And thank you, IMA, for taking this as a cut and razor event of the coming event. Wishing you all the best. Have a great weekend, rest of the weekend, and have a great week ahead. Thank you.